May Father and the Holy Spirit speak to us. At any given point in time, approximately 10% of the ocean waters are at a heat level that is dangerous in the sense that it kills marine life, kills bird life, and creates enough heat rising from it that it causes potential for cyclones and hurricanes. At any given time, 10% of the ocean waters are at that threshold. Right now, 40% of the ocean waters are at that level that's above the red line, creating events that could produce cyclones, hurricanes, kill marine life, and kill the bird life. And by September of this year, 2023, we're expecting 50% of the ocean waters to be above the red line, creating potential mass chaos in the atmosphere, producing widespread cyclones and hurricanes that could be devastating and tr uh, tr produce tragedy beyond anything that has ever hit the earth before. We are living in treacherous times. We are living in the times that Jesus prophesied about before his return. Some of you may know that just a few days back, July 4th of this year, was the hottest day in the world. Get that again, July 4th. 2023, check it out for yourself, was the hottest day on earth since we started keeping records. Oftentimes we watch television and we see, you know, forest fires in different states or in different parts of the world. We see hurricanes hitting other states or different parts of the world and we watch it with our eyes, but it doesn't really affect us. It doesn't seem real. But beloved, it's going to get real to you it's going to get real to everybody. The storm is coming. Yeshua talked about two men that built their house on two different foundations. Yeshua said one man built his house on the sand. He said and when the storm came, that man's house collapsed. He said the other man built his house on a rock. And when the storm came, that man's house stood because his house was built on the rock. We oftentimes think of that parable and consider the two foundations. And that's an awesome word, but listen to this. It's not just about the fact that there are two different types of foundations to build on the sand or the rock. It's about the storm hits your home no matter where you built. The storm hit the man's house that was built on the rock as well as the man's house that was built on the sand. And the storm, my friends, is going to hit and affect every single one of us. I just got off the phone, a lengthy voicemail from a friend of mine in Israel. She left me a 19-minute voicemail about what's going on in Israel today. And I asked her, I said, Jill, what's going on there right now? Tell me in your own words, she lives there. I said, how is this different from all the other wars that we've heard about in Israel for how many years? We're always hearing about continual threats in the Gaza and the different terrorist groups in Iran. I said, tell me what's different now. And you could just hear in the sound of her voice, in the, in, in the sense of, 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 of strength and faith in the Lord, yet the sense of one that was really going through it. She said, Rabbi, we're in total chaos over here. The government is in total chaos. The protests on the streets are in total chaos. The threats from the outside, it's not a question of when this major war in Israel was going to break out with Iran and Syria. I'm talking about a major world war that could ever change the face of the world forever. She said it's not when, it's not if, it's when. It's like imminent. Things are unhinged. Not to mention what we're seeing in America with all the chaos and all, all the fighting. I was watching a really interesting interview the other day and the person that being was being interviewed was an executive a former executive of the Levi company everybody's familiar with Levi jeans and she was their branding expert top tier executive branding expert for Levi jeans she was living in San Francisco for years she lived in San Francisco she loved it when she moved there. She said it was the most welcoming, inclusive city in the world. She said you could be anything. You could be, you know, an artist. You could be a nerd. You could be, you know, eccentric. It was a warm place, she said. Everybody was welcomed. She ended up leaving San Francisco recently. She said it's become the most in 
tolerant city she's ever experienced in her life. She said there is such a mass oppressive power to conform to the liberal progressive agenda there that if you even question anything that this liberal woke progressive agenda stands for, you're immediately labeled as an evil bigot. You're canceled, you're cultured, and you're out. She talked about what happened during COVID. If you even raised a question during COVID about anything that was going on, about the science, about the restrictions, if you even asked the questions to try to discuss it, you were immediately silenced. She said it became so oppressive. You, unless you said the right things and didn't say what you weren't supposed to say, you can't talk about anything that you're not supposed to say. You have to just go with this liberal, progressive, woke ideology. And unless you completely not only accept it or, or allow it, unless you celebrate it, you're out. And people even look at you. How, if, you if you just stay silent in a conversation and don't get all behind this liberalism, then the people you're suspect, maybe you're not really in. I'm telling you, we are unanchored, not to mention what is going on here in America. What's really going on? What is really going on? Let's think it for, about it for a second. I watch sometimes reality television talent contest. I won't name any particular shows, but sometimes Cynthia and I will watch talent contests where all different types of acts from across the world perform to see who is the greatest talent. And what I've noticed is if somebody performs that has any type of handicap, uh, I hope I'm using the correct language, if there's any type of um, challenge that a person is having physically, if there's a person that society in the past has marginalized, if there's, if there's a person on there that in any way um, has faced uh, challenges in their past, the judges seem to vote for them to go through even if they don't have the same level of talent as the previous contestant that just, that just performed, that, that was just a normal person. In other words, there is such a push right now to celebrate so for, so the, 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 the under, the, the marginalized, those that were at one time uh, maybe uh, didn't have the same opportunities in life. There's such a social agenda now to accept everything and to celebrate Everybody that has been marginalized in the past, it's so strong that the world's lost its mind. It's no longer based on competency. It's no longer based on, it's unhinged. It's unhinged and it's demonic. And, and um, the, 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 the challenge that I want you to, to take right now is this. What's really going on? Do these forces that are celebrating the rights of the underprivileged, do they really care about the underprivileged? These great forces that are so fo that are that are that are championing the case against racism, do they really care about racism, or is there something deeper going on? Let me throw this question at you: If we don't believe in God, if we if a person does not believe in God, if a person doesn't believe that God created the world, if you don't believe that God created you. If you, don't believe, if you just believe that the world is here because something blew up in space billions of years ago for no reason at all, some random explosion happened, and somehow the result of that random explosion was life, and that's where we all came from, it can all be scientifically measured and analyzed. If that's what you believe, then how can you actually have a case against racism? Because if that's the case, if it's all just based on science and a big bang and evolution, maybe some races are more advanced than other races. If it's just based on science and evolution, it would make perfect sense that some races would be more advanced than other races, because that's just what evolution is. That's what evolutionary selection is all about. So if you don't believe in God, but you're all against racism, what are you basing that on? You have nothing to base it on because your whole foundation is science, and science actually talks about uh, evolution and a selective uh, species uh, evolving more highly than other species. What I'm saying is, I'm, 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 first of all, I, I believe in God. I believe that all men are equal. Okay, but if you don't believe that we're created by God, you have no basis to come against racism. You'd actually probably have to scientifically and logically take another point of view that some species are more advanced and more developed for whatever scientific reasons there would be. So what I'm saying is that these people, the, the progressive left, this agenda, this woke agenda that they're pushing on us, it's not legitimate and it's not honest. 
You see, they really don't care so much about what they say they're talking about. What they really care about is gaining power. And they're out of their mind. They don't even know why they're trying to gain power. They don't even know what their end is. All they know is they want power. They want to control things. They're based in chaos and their trajectory is chaos. But what they're saying they care about, they really don't care about because they have no basis of reality to make any moral decisions about anything because their whole basis is based in science, not in morality. So there's something else that's going on. There's a demonic principality. There are wicked forces of darkness that are pushing this liberal, woke, progressive agenda that's unhinged from God, unanchored in eternal life, and the whole purpose is to create mass destruction. Satan has come to steal and to kill and to destroy. To steal, kill, and destroy. And what's so interesting is that Jesus taught us that the devil doesn't come looking like the devil. He comes disguising himself, he said to us through the Apostle Paul, disguised as an angel of light. And so all these causes, all these woke causes, all, all this liberalism, all this inclusiveness, all this supposedly caring about everybody, except of course those that believe in God and those that are committed to the Bible were the dinosaurs, right? All this is just a front it's the, it's the powers of darkness disguising itself as an angel of light like it really has good intentions, like it really cares about people, like it's really looking for equality. It doesn't care about any of that. All the power behind this liberal agenda wants is power. It wants to control you. It wants to silence you, just like that Levi's branding expert and executive from, Cal from, San, uh, from, uh, from San Francisco told us about. That pressure to just be quiet, don't question, Okay, we're becoming like Nazi Germany. Don't question the Fuhrer. Don't question Hitler. Don't question the Fuhrer. And if you don't say, Heil Hitler loud enough, then your loyalty to the low liberal agenda is questionable. And they're going to sniff you out and hunt you down. And you're going to eventually be blocked out and driven out. Do you understand the times that we're living in? Do you get what's going on? We just got done with Gay Pride Month, the rainbow. Did you know that the rainbow is perhaps the most sacred symbol in Scripture? I'm not saying that the rainbow is more, uh, um, more of a symbol than the cross, but I'm just saying that in Scripture, in Revelation 4-3, when, the, when John sees the Lord on the throne, John says there was a rainbow around the throne. Isn't it interesting? The pure, beautiful, rainbow, life of God that surrounds his throne has been hijacked and taken captive by the LGBTQ movement and is being used now as a symbol of sexual perversion and deviation. Christ, antichrist. Do you see what's going on? And yet so many of you are deceived. So many of you don't see what's going on. You think it's all good. You think it's all beautiful. You think it's all about inclusiveness. It's not about that. It's about the powers of darkness destroying men's mind and searing their conscience to take man captive. It, all in preparation for the storm that's coming. And in fact, beloved ones, is already here. Now, this is not just a message of woe, but I wanted to share with you prophetically what's going to be happening next in the next several years. So many of us have backed down on taking a stand for the rainbow. We, we, we don't want to associate with it. I encourage you to go to takingtherainbowback.com and join the movement. If you don't get involved now, you're not going to get involved. You're going to get washed away by the flood. If you compromise now, you're going to compromise later. And the next place you're going to compromise, if you compromise now, is you're going to stop declaring that Jesus is the only way. Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but through me. That there is no name under heaven, the scripture says, by which men can be saved, but the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But if you back down now on this LGBTQ agenda, don't stick up and don't speak out for truth, when it comes to the pressure that's coming upon the earth to compromise in your confession that Jesus is the only way, you're going to start backing off there. Because people are going to start saying that Christians that believe in that Bible that's a dinosaur, 
that are making this claim that people that don't believe in Jesus go to hell, those people are evil, bigoted idiots. And they need to be cast out of society. They're hateful and we need to get rid of them. There's no place for them in our world anymore. We need to stamp them out. And you know what's going to happen if you compromise, compromise now, my beloved friend, my beloved daughter and son? You're going to compromise then. You're going to compromise when the world starts telling you you can't claim that Jesus is the only way anymore. You're going to start saying, well, you know, I know that, you know, all people don't believe in Jesus and I believe God's a gracious God. Listen, do you understand that it's only through the blood of Messiah, Jesus, that mankind's sins are forgiven? I don't care what part of the world you're from. I don't care if you're young or old. I don't care if you're rich or poor. I don't care if you're from Asia, Africa, United States. I don't care how much money you make. It doesn't matter. There's only one way that man's blood can be forgiven. It's through the precious blood of Jesus. If you're going to compromise now, you're going to compromise when the world starts putting pressure on you to compromise about that basic confession of your faith that there's no name under heaven by which men can be saved but the name of Jesus. Let me tell you what's going to happen next. I got up several weeks ago and I was doing my daily devotional and I opened the scriptures up to the book of Esther. I just open the scriptures up at random. I'll often do that. I'll say, Lord, is there anything, just a particular scripture that's outside of my daily reading and order, is there anything just in the Bible you want to speak to me about today? So this particular day, I open the word, and God doesn't speak to me every day I do that, but I just open myself up to it. Turn to the book of Esther. And at the particular portion that I open to, the Jews had been given victory over their enemies that were seeking to annihilate them. And the Bible says that when the Jews got the victory over them, they did to their enemies whatever they wanted to. And when I read that, bam, it was like a bomb of the Holy Spirit of Revelation went off in my mind. And I heard the Lord, not in my mind, but in my intuition, say to me, this is what's coming next. The world is going to start pinpointing scriptures like the one that you just read where it says the Jews did whatever they wanted to with their enemies and they're going to use scriptures like that to foster and booster anti-Semitism. They're going to start focusing on Jews bombing just, uh, places in, uh, the, uh, the, in, in, on their borders where they're being bombed and attacked to protect themselves, but they're not going to show the Jewish people protecting themselves. The media is going to show the Jewish people bombing places to protect themselves where children are getting heart, hurt because you can't always, sometimes it just happens in war and the world is going to turn against the Jews once again. Once again, the whole world, it's not just going to be Nazi Germany. The whole world is going to turn against the Jews again, I believe even worse than it was in the time of Nazi Germany. The world is getting ready, beloved, for the biggest anti-Semitic attack against Jewish people that the world has ever known. And in addition to that, as part of this same agenda, which is going to be breathed into the earth's culture through the powers of darkness that are in the atmosphere right now, in addition to that, the devil is going to start highlighting scriptures in the Word of God, particularly in the Torah, the first five books of our Bible, where the Lord commanded the Israelites to go in to the nations before them, where he was driving out the barbarians and the enemies, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Jezebites, and all the otherites. And he was telling them, I want you to kill every man, woman, child, and infant, and don't leave anything breathing. What the enemy is going to begin to do is he's going to begin to put scriptures like that on television, in school systems, over the airwaves, on the internet, pointing how the God of Israel told the Israelites to go kill every man, woman, child, and infant. And what the enemy is going to do is going to breathe a hatred against the God of Israel and everyone that believes in this word. Get ready. It's coming. You're about to be attacked. Worse than you have ever even imagined. It's worse than you're thinking. Because it's so horrific. I, I don't want anyone to tune out right now because I, I have something I want to share to you to strengthen you. But you need to get ready. Jesus said the storm is coming. Yeshua said it's going to get so bad that unless the days had been shortened, not even the elect would be able to endure what's coming. So what should you do? You should realize that everything in your life other than Jesus is superfluous. 
There's great gifts that God has given us, particularly our family, our health, all the different beautiful blessings that we enjoy from the Lord. But you need to understand there's a great shaking that's coming. And if you don't start waking up in the morning and talking to God and putting Him first and getting in your devotional and getting into the Word, if you don't start putting God first now, my beloved friend, you will not stand when the storm gets fiercer. You need to start getting involved with other believers. God never called us to walk with Him solo. This Bible is not written just to individuals. It was written first to the nation and the community of Israel, and then it was given to the ecclesia, the called out ones, the church. You look to any of Paul's writings. His writings were written to the church. You look in the book of Revelation. The writings were written to the church at Smyrna, the church at Laodicea, the church at Ephesus. Paul's book is to the church in in Ephesus. All the different books of the Bible are written to the community of God's people. Some of you that are watching right now, your Christian life consists of watching YouTubes. You need to get in fellowship with God's people. You need to worship with them. Be in Bible study with them. The scripture says that when the apostles were on the earth, that the saints gathered daily to listen to the apostles' teaching for fellowship, for the breaking of bread, and for prayer. They were living together in community. In the book of Acts, the saints were selling all their possessions and then giving the proceeds to the church so that the church could take care of everyone. If we don't come together as a body, we will not be able to stand. So you need to, first of all, begin your day with God. Get into the Word. Get involved with local believers. Listen, honor God with the sacrifice of praise. We need to live above our emotions. I'm getting older in life. I don't feel like I did 10 years ago. I get tired sometimes. I have to force myself to live by my spirit rather than by my flesh. That's a sacrifice of praise. We can't live by our emotions. I'm talking about how to live in victory. If we're going to live in victory, we can't be held captive by our emotions. Sure, we battle our emotions, but I can't control whether a cloud's going to fly overhead in a few minutes or the sun's going to be shining over my head in a few minutes. I'm talking about in the natural atmosphere. In the same way, we can't always control how we feel. We don't know sometimes why we feel happy and light and peaceful and other times we feel fearful or oppressed. We can't control the emotion, but we can make a choice inside our will because our will is stronger than our emotion. So if you're going to stand in the storm, you need to learn to live by your choice. The Bible says, rejoice continually. Again, I say rejoice. We begin to thank God for who He is, for what He's done that he's always with us. And I want to leave you with this last word that the Lord gave to me a few days ago that I think will help you as we're living in these perilous times. Things are going to get worse, but you know what? Things are going to get better too. Because those of us that live in God, the Bible says we will reign in life through Christ Jesus. We're going to be like Israel was in Egypt. When Egypt was getting plummeted with with the plagues, Israel was in Goshen. They still felt the effect of the plagues. They still saw the plagues, but there was a level of comfort and protection that they had in the midst of the storm. And the same will be for you and I when we make God our refuge. So get serious, my beloved friends, my brothers and sisters. I'm talking about real serious. Whatever God is speaking to you about in your life, whatever you need to give up, whatever you need to do to put Him first, What other sacrifice you need to give them? Honor God with your finances. If you're not honoring God with your finances, your heart's not really honoring Him. Because honoring God with our finances is one of the primary ways that we live a life of obedience and and sacrifice to Him. This is why Jesus and the Scriptures talked about it so much. Because where our treasure is, there our heart's going to be. So I just want to encourage you, get right with God. Finally, I want to leave you with this. The Lord really uh, ministered this to me the other day. and Thank you for being with me today. I was uh, planning a specific day, of uh, a day of rest for my wife Cynthia and I. We had a very specific uh, uh, situation that we were going to be doing together to enjoy ourselves. It was the only day we had to do this enjoyable thing in a 10-day period. And so we, we really planned it out well. We marked it out, got up really early to make it all good and, and, and right. So we get out to where we're going. And uh, sure enough, I ran into a mechanical problem with, with what I was going to be using that day. 
I mean, I was all ready, you know, all hours of preparation, go to start the motor up, the electrical won't work. And I had a decision to make right there. Because in my old life, I would have got all frustrated, you know. Either I would have cursed out loud or cursed in my heart. I would have let the spirit of frustration out of me. But instead, I looked around and I said, look, you got a choice here. You could either have a spirit of cursing and frustration, but if you do, that's going to be a stench to God. I mean, look around you. Look at all the good you see around you. You can't allow your heart to have a spirit of cursing. So instead, you know what I did? I said, Father, thank you for all your goodness. Thank you for all this joy that I do have, all the good that I do have. I'm not going to offend you, Father. I'm not going to have a spirit of entitlement. I'm not going to curse because if I curse the situation, that's cursing you. So I'm just going to let go of this expectation that I had that this thing was going to work out this way and it didn't go the way I had hoped and planned. I'm just going to let that go. I'm not going to allow it to, 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 to put a, a spirit of cursing in my spirit. I'm just going to continue to bless you. We've all heard the saying, let go and let God. Lord, I'm just going to let go and let you lead me today and let this day be whatever you want it to be. Beloved, God bless you. I know that I laid some heavy stuff on you today, but the point that I'm really driving at and that I want to leave you with, friends, we got to be serious about God, regardless of what the cost is. Go to takingtherainbowback.com. I love you. This is Rabbi Schneider saying until next time, shalom. When Rabbi said we were gonna put a rainbow in the show, I was like, are you sure? I was worried people were gonna look at us differently and wouldn't understand what we were doing. But as I began to pray, the Lord began to prick at my heart and I began to realize I was wrong. I had been more influenced by society than God's Word, and I realized I needed to make a shift. I think many of us need to make that shift. We've got to speak out and share the truth of God, or there won't be anything left to stand up for. God is calling us to stand up for our children and to stand up for future generations. We need to take the rainbow back. We need to stand up for truth. Visit takingtherainbowback.com today and make a difference.